there. This is the Crepuscular Baronies Discast. I'm the ANY Pony, and today with me I have, for the first time, two guests. First, as usual, Baita, welcome to the show. Blog. And in addition, today we've got Digi Brony, another YouTube uh, MLP reviewer with us. Welcome, you. Hello. Hello. Okay, and topic for... Blog. No, that's your thing. <laughs> I know. Trademark. Don't offer other people your trademark catchphrase. That's not very... What about gas-powered stick? Yeah. Gas anyway, powered. today's topic <laughs> is yesterday's new episode, uh, Keep Calm and Flutter On. Yes. And, yeah, I'm the only one uh, who hasn't finished his own review yet, so you two can go first. What are your opinions? <laughs> Oh, well, I haven't I, seen I, your I, one yet. <laughs> Mine's like 12 and a half minutes long. I don't know if I want to restate everything. Well, we probably will get to everything in here because this is probably going to be even longer since it's a podcast. Um, but you can Well, what's first. your overall feelings, dude? I haven't oh, well, actually seen it yet. My overall <laughs> feelings, um, in general, obviously about the, the, the structure of the episode, I think a lot of people are going to say that it's... Um, it should have been two parts. It should have been a two-part episode because it kind of goes really quickly, and uh, the resolution comes like really fast. Discord's just like, oh, having a friend is kind of cool, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go be friends with you now. And it's like, what? Why did he even care about friendship or anything? He didn't have time to like really learn about friendship. Mm -hmm. He just kind of uh, decided that he liked it at the end, and so it should have been longer. Um, that's that's the most that's like the first thing yeah. that I thought when I finished the episode. I think yeah that that ties very much in my final conclusion where I said I think it, it it's a matter of pacing and pr pr uh, showing Discord's arc mm. in the sense that um, yeah it there wasn't enough time for it and the other thing was that the majority of the episode until the very end he doesn't have an arc. Yeah. He. It, 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 well, uh, this is what I was talking about uh, in my review, was that Discord himself is a very simple antagonist, and he's a force of pure mm -hmm. chaos. That He's not a particularly deep or nuanced character. He's yeah. there to wave his hands and make silly stuff happen, uh, you know, to create chaos. But that, does, that makes it hard to uh, read him as a character. Yeah. That, there's no obvious change or paradigm shift in how he's... You know, we can't tell whether he's being serious or not. Because yeah, he's, I feel yeah. like that. Um, they it's almost like they use that to brush it under the rug. That this uh, that like like it, you you could say, if if I were to try to justify the way the episode is done, I would say, well, he's chaotic, so he can just change his mind on the fly, and it, you know that's just him. Well, yeah, but you that's know. the problem, though. Yeah, that it's a problem. The, the but if I was going to try to justify it, I would do that. Yeah, the justification though is that. Well, he's chaotic, so that's how it plays out. But that means the story itself makes the core arc it's trying to play not work, or yeah. at least have diff great difficulties. Yeah, I'm just trying. I'm trying to warm up to the idea of uh, justifying problems in the show because that's something I've noticed a lot of people comment on in my videos. Is when I uh, talk about like, something like Ghostbusters, which well, actually, I'm not going to talk about that one because that's just a terrible episode. But uh, I was talking about in uh, I think Finky, feeling Pinky Keen. I, I said that basically it was the fault of the the writers didn't. Um, they just messed up at some parts. You know, they should have done it better, and other people seem to be more open to the idea of uh, rationalizing what happened in the episode. Regardless of whether it was right or wrong for the writers to do it that way, they'd rather take what exists and fit it into the continuity so that they can, I guess, feel good about it. So uh, yeah. Yeah. if I was going to do that for this episode, that's how I'd treat it. I'd say Discord's an agent of chaos, you know, he just Well, yeah, flow, though, you know, I, I don't see, uh, as as a reviewer, I don't particularly want to fill the role as an yeah, apologist. Yeah, I don't want to fill that role either. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, not an, I'm not an apologist to try and explain how the episodes uh, yeah. could work. What mm -hmm. I want to explain is how the episodes do or don't didn't, work. Yeah, didn't work. Exactly, yeah. and I'm I'm usually like that too. I just I, I really want to warm up to it because so many people feel this way where they where they try to justify it, and I just want to get into their head a little a, bit. A lot of like, people you know. are very involved in the show, and they have already um yeah. they're already bought into the the show, whatever the show gives us. Mm -hmm. But it um I, I prefer more just myself to be a more honest kind of way of going out there, yeah. that um, I just look at things as they are from a, a neutral perspective mm -hmm. and say, is that good, is that bad, 
was it built up in the world? You know, did, did it? You know, is it telling a good story? Is that? I mean, that's what they yeah. want to do. Is they? Is it entertaining? Is it telling us a story? Yeah, and of course, I'm sure we all really enjoy this show, regardless of us, uh, yeah. <laughs> of, of us looking at it that way with a critical eye. I think the problem that a lot of people have is that they they think that to be a fan of something, you you're supposed to not be as critical of it. I've seen or you this have sort to of attitude, like it, or it has to be good. Yeah, yeah. where you you know. It, I can. I mean, there's no episode of MLP that I hate. You know, the closest I come is maybe Ghostbusters because it's really bad. But I so. when I, you know, when I, when I uh, take up issue with these episodes, I'm not trying to be like, oh, this is bad, and you should feel bad for liking it. If even if you like, even if I think it's bad and you still like it, whatever, man, that's cool. I don't. I'm well, not attacking if, you. If, attacking if something is writing, bad, you know? then yeah, we we should be going out and explaining that it is bad. Yeah. I, I'm not in the position of trying to make excuses. Yeah. And in fact, for me, uh, when something doesn't work, such as in many of the episodes for me for season three, mm. I, I prefer to explain where the show has gone off the beaten track or what, where what I liked before is no longer around. Mm. Yeah. Hey, so, why are you uh, still there? You want to Yeah, I'm still there. Story? It's very interesting <laughs> to see you two go uh, back and forth about uh, the topic. So, and the really uh, tricky part is I don't have too much to add because I'm uh, also pretty. Uh, yeah. You talk about how you aim for entertainment or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's for me. It's uh, I was thinking when you said you are trying to look on it very neutral and objective. Um, yeah, I am uh, admittedly um, always going for a very subjective view. So I see. I, I'm if I like an episode, my review will be positive. I if I don't like it, it will be negative in the overall zone, uh, tone. But I usually try to uh, point out aspects. Uh, I didn't like or like. Uh, nevertheless, I how I enjoyed the whole thing. But yeah, the end result will really uh, will most likely depend on my personal view. And for um, keep calm and flutter on, it was I'm still I'm still trying to figure it out. It just I don't. Well, how did you? Yeah, did you like it or not? Or kind of? I liked parts of it. <laughs> <laughs> there, there were a lot of enjoyable moments and. Um, but there were also a lot of things I was like, ah, really. To give you a little more time to think, I'll also chime in about um, what you were saying about um, how you are going from a more subjective perspective, and he's going for a more object, obje objective, objective one. He's a um, robot; he can't help it. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't really, um, I don't subscribe to either of those uh, so like definitive ways of going about things. And there's a, there's a reason I don't call my stuff reviews. Mm -hmm. um, you notice I call it thorough analysis because uh, to me, yeah. and mind you, I, I've, I've got like a lifelong obsession with reviews as a concept. I've been like reading and writing them since I was like small and I'm always trying to com come up with like what, uh, what do I like about reviews, what do I d dislike about them. But in general, I think when people use the term reviews or when they read the term reviews, they're expecting it to be a value judgment about the show. And uh, yep. that's really not my intent at all, is I'm not trying to make a value judgment about the show. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing so. But personally, I don't, I don't really think that um, if I make value judgments, some people might find that interesting, but I don't find it interesting from myself. Like, uh, actually, and I haven't seen any of your reviews yet, Biter, so I don't really know yep. what kind of angle you take on it. But um, <laughs> I want to talk about, I think we've all seen Paleo Steno's reviews. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually he's going along, and I, I'm usually like, I think his videos are good, and he'll be saying stuff that's like semi review, semi analysis. But then when he gets to the end and he like gives the episode a score, it really means nothing to me because, yeah, from my perspective, I'm thinking, uh, like, what does your score mean? Who, yeah. like, I don't really know. I, I, I guess if I had seen all of his reviews mm. and I know, like, in general, what he thinks about, um, Individual what, episodes what he of the values, show, what he doesn't, and he, how yeah, he if he gives it a four, I might be like, well, I get where he's coming from with his four because I know what kind of uh, reviewer he is. Unfortunately, I don't think he's covered all the episodes in depth enough for for it to feel that way. And when so when I get to the end, I'm just like, I don't. Your score really does not mean anything to me. Now, on the other yeah. hand, it's fun sometimes to put in scores. I've thought about doing stuff like that myself just because it's almost cathartic to to just put like a 
a thing on the episode and go like, um, yeah, I gave it a four, and now I can like easily rank all the episodes, uh, you know. For example, there is yeah. another oh. reviewer, uh, uh, Strebikunk is his name. Uh, he yeah, I've uses, seen him as well. Yeah, he uses uh, stills all the time, so he's a video yeah. reviewer as well. So because Biter is a written reviewer over on Indian Art, so. Ah. That's why we haven't found his videos yet. I see. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's hard uh, to get written review. Con- it's hard to get any written content out in the in the in the pony fandom at all. Yeah. Because I was writing these uh, these analyses beforehand before I started making videos. Like uh, I started doing it like last April, but just with a, I only did like the first two episodes, and then um, the se- the second season ended, and I just didn't do it for a while. And then when the third season started, I was like, I really want to write. A- analytical posts again so I started and I have like one reader on my blog who is like following these posts because most of my readers were like anime fans and I've kind of not talked about anime for a long time so they're kind of Well it was on your blog isn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, You have to actually get traffic to the blog Oh my blog had a lot of traffic in that before, but back when it was about anime, then you know I yeah, had so they, they, I had a pretty good following, but, but those anime. people those people are like, oh, he's talking about ponies. We don't care, you know. But I had like <laughs> one guy who is leaving these really in depth, beautiful comments on all my posts, and he like kind of made it worth it. But then I, I said I'm gonna turn these into videos because I think it, it'd be nice. And then I posted it on YouTube, and it like the first video got like 600 hits in a day. And I went, whoa! Yeah. This is still, this how is did you do this? Did you promote your video anywhere or Reddit? Just Reddit. Reddit. Ah, okay. I haven't been there. Uh, I haven't posted anything there. Yeah, that's the only place my stuff has gotten. I want to obviously get it onto like Equestria Daily or something, just yeah, for, who doesn't? for the sheer <laughs> spread. But they've never taken anything I've submitted them in the past year, so I don't know. It's I guess it's I keep telling people like, yeah, if you like my videos, send them in. You know, send them to all your favorite pony sites. <laughs> but as far as I know, uh, none of them have made it past Reddit. Yeah. Well, uh, what you were saying, though, uh, and remember at the beginning, was what you view a review is for. Mm-hmm. And yours was like uh, an, a value judgment. Yeah. I, I think, the, well, yeah, the value judgment comes at the end. But the, yeah. for me, uh, the thing I always prefer more in a review is mm-hmm. it being a, it's being a, a, an opinion of being yeah. a in-depth thought about something. So when someone's giving a review, they are talking about, what they saw in the episode, what they understand by it, and right. you know what they valued or didn't value, and then mm. you can see multiple reviews, and you can see which views are concordant and which aren't. Yeah. So mm. I, I, what I prefer about reviews is actually what I, as the viewer, can walk away from it. That once yeah. I finish watching, reading, or watching, or whatever that review, I have a better understanding of the the mechanics yeah. or the how yeah, the thing that's, worked. That's it, ultimately my goal as well. You yeah. Know? Which I is, just basically just the only thing that separates me from being a reviewer is pretty much that I took out the value judgments at the end of my yeah you know, yeah my I, I don't think that's what I'm saying that I don't think reviews are based on that value judgment on yeah. the end I just think that's that's just I'm just like a like I think a review would entail everything that I do and also the value judgment you know like just that one element is the only thing that's like that's keeping me from calling myself a reviewer and of course this is like this is basically just me making up my own definition of the terms, really, because yeah. you could yeah. say whatever you want about it. But uh, it's just why I don't refer to them as reviews, because I feel like people will be expecting that or uh, or that it carries some kind of connotation to me. Again, I obsess well, over this term way too much over the yeah. past 10 years. The way I, kind the of way I looked at it, uh, I uh, never even thought about a value, uh, value judgment because... Uh, uh, on the other hand, I'm uh, also referring to myself as a reviewer and my videos mm-hmm. as reviews in um, in regards like the term has been used on the internet for the last uh, two to three years. Yeah. So it is not the reviewer in the original serious way. It's more this uh, information slash entertainment I'm going yeah. for. So. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with calling whatever you want to call a review a review. Yeah. I'm just my personal take on uh, why I call my videos analysis. Uh, and it's why I haven't jumped on any... Like, people always refer to myself as reviews anyway, and I haven't, like, disputed them. I haven't been like, no, it's an analysis. Cause I'm <laughs> like, it's, it's practically... It, there's no real difference. It's just, like, personal... Uh, for me, personal uh, take. yeah. Um, all I do for a value judgment is I talk... My, my structure of my reviews as I first go what's the core of the story? Mm-hmm. Then what's the secondaries or whatever secondary arcs or little bits and pieces are in the story? 
what I would have done in retrospect, and then in the end, my conclusion. Mm -hmm. So my conclusion is my final judgment. It yeah. is the one with the, my, my most opinion in it. Yeah. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is I show my journey through it, and I can yeah. show how uh, the episode could have done better. So it, I think for me that's what how I, I still think of it as a review because all yeah. I'm focusing on is explaining how the episode seems to work for me or, yeah. or how I think it how it's trying what it's going for and how then it I explain how the reaction it's that you had yeah uh, what whether those uh, what it was going for worked or not yeah so yeah. Um, we should actually get back to uh, the episode. Keep calm and flutter off. Right, there was something we met for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and uh, the, that's the thing that we went straight to Discord. And I think that's mm. the core. Uh, that the uh, m what I said for my thing was the yeah. core of the story is it's it's trying to tell the story of Discord being turned you know turned normal yeah. uh, and have an arc through Discord and Fluttershy. Yeah. So the core of it is, you know, Discord doing stuff and Discord and Fluttershy having their own arcs. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that the Discord one doesn't, it isn't an, it isn't a, you it's know, it, it's arc. a line, it just, and then yeah. suddenly an arc. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. <to go> up. <laughs> and um, I, I had a similar feeling for Fluttershy. Um, well, okay, so. That, I know you guys haven't gotten to see my video yet because it's like no, it's, it only most just of it out. is um most of it is just me talking about uh Fluttershy um because of the fact that Fluttershy is such a weird character to me cuz she's mm -hmm. uh, first of all I think she's had the fewest episodes to herself right out of all the ponies I don't know uh, she has she had, about 5 in season 2 she had about 2 right yeah. uh, next to each other she, she doesn't has, have yeah, the she most screen time. Before this. Yeah, she, she definitely have, doesn't have the most screen time. No. She does, and, however, um, have a lot more character episodes than I think. Well, uh, I was going to say Apple. I Jack, can name but... them all first. If it, it would be uh, Dragon Shy, yeah. A Bird in the Hoof, which is like, I don't even know if that counts. Green isn't your color. Mm -hmm. um, putting your hoof down and. Uh, Hurricane Fluttershy before now were her episodes, and in pretty much each of these, then it's she's practically relearning the same lesson over and over again. Where it's like you know she's shy, she doesn't deal well with uh, either it, it's either a social situation or a literal thing she has to fight by the end of the episode. But every time it's about her getting over this fear and prevailing in the end. But the problem is that she's learned this lesson five times now. Uh, I think. We we get it that that she's a, a scared character who sometimes can uh, can well, defeat her scaredness um, to fight enemies. I'm not enemies, sure she know. necessarily learns a lesson every single yeah. time. Sometimes, like for example, the very first one, the one with the dragon. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it, it's not that she has a great character um, lesson uh -huh. learned. Right, she, she, uh, she just more art. like uh, she just it's, it's more like she already had it in no. her. Sort yeah, it, exactly, and uh, that's the way I've sort of generally more yeah. viewed her more assertive side. Yeah, that, like uh, uh, in my in my review, I, mo I I I said that she's a character who's trapped in being established. Like every episode is like, because Dragon Shy was definitely an establishment episode. It was teaching us here's mm -hmm. what Fluttershy is, and I feel like every episode has been re 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 um reaffirming that. Yeah, reaffirming that same point. Um, of who she is, but this episode actually does do something different. It totally never even brings up the fact that she's this frightened, uh, yeah. scared pony she, or whatever. So it, it definitely it's finally good. taking her in a new direction and saying, "Here's yeah. an, a new aspect of Fluttershy for us to learn about." You know, finally the one she has beca uh, become at the end of uh, putting your hoof down, the yeah. very uh, self-esteem one who still uh, stays true to her calm and uh, kind self, but uh, actually does something. She yeah. is. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I feel like th this aspect of her has existed in other episodes. It's just inconsistent. Because if you watch um, season three, like in the first episode of season three in Crystal Empire, then she's like the shy, uh, just normal. It's like just well, basic butter shy. You know, yeah, yeah, she she almost doesn't do anything in that episode. And then you see her in. She um, 
you see her in too many Pinkie Pies, and she's being sort of the... It's like if, if uh, the Crystal Empire is her default self in hectic situations, and then too many Pinkie Pies is her default self in non-hectic situations, where she's just nice and she's like queen well, of the animals. Well, she didn't do anything in Crystal Empire. I can't really say much about her character. Yeah, all she I mean, did really he, was uh, shy away along from with the a group. bunch of Crystal Ponies. Yeah, yeah, and yeah she, was, she was a bit shy in some situations. when we yeah. The few times we see her, and then she goes jousting. Yeah, trying to remember her. Um, uh, yeah, so, she was hardly well, that. I can, I can, I can describe what much. happens because it bothered me so much because of the fact that she, um, she's, she's trying to get the attention of the crystal ponies and they're just ignoring her. Yeah. And then she sees these two on a on a bench and she like raises her hoof and gets this angry face, oh. but then she just like completely calls down and says, "Oh, I'm sorry." And it was so weird for her to do that, and I was like, "Where did this?" I guess it's supposed to be a reference to putting your hoof down, but it just came through as just really strange. It, it's the me. difficulty of having a show written by however many yeah, writers they a lot have, of different by people. 12 hands. Half a dozen, so, uh, 13 episode. Uh, yeah. So then you get to Magic Duel, and then we have a Fluttershy who completely has not remembered any of her lessons. This one, she's like, no, I'm not going to do it put me back in the log, I don't want to go, I don't want to fight anything, I don't want to try to do anything, you know. She and she's mean to, to um, Twilight at the beginning, yeah. which yeah, is really odd. I mean, think about Fluttershy in The Stairmaster, in which uh, the, the Cutie Mark Crusaders go off into the Everfree Forest, and she she's like, she gulps like she's afraid, but when she sees that they're out there and she knows there's a cockatrice, she like, Goes. just oh, yeah. darts in there, and then when it's when a Twilight's in danger in Magic Duel, she has to be dragged into the Everfree Forest by a well, bunch Twilight, of birds. You know. With the core, it's not danger as much. It, it, you know, she has, in most situations, righteous anger against the dragon yeah. or Stairmaster. I just think Whereas at this point, Fluttershy, the... she, we, she, she, we know she can handle herself in the Everfree Forest. We know she can do this. She's probably been in there like four times now. You she know. can probably handle it better than other... Uh, the other yeah, because she can talk to animals and stuff. In, uh, dragon Crest. She well, when did did she be able to talk to animals before, other than this episode? I think it was stated at some point that her she was able to communicate yeah, she with has animals. Yeah, I thought that that you know the way they usually portrayed it though was that yeah. uh, that she had an actual empathy with the animals yeah. rather than actively understanding Speaking their lingo. No, no. Yeah. Well, I this think, one um, is like a literal interpretation of she could has a, a way of communicating with them. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say. I think because I think uh, you know animals, and this is me going to be reading deep into My Little Pony, where I'm going to be saying that like, uh, you know, animals in real life, they don't speak a language that could actually be translated into our language, but they do speak a language yeah. to one another. It's just, it doesn't have words. It's literally growl, growl, growl. You know, and yeah, she's basically they... interpreting the emotions of what those growls are or what those growls symbolize and she's reinterpreting them into English which is really what any translator does because languages aren't ever just you well, know well except one, one a, a, an actual translator between you know French and English the translator isn't listening to how angry the person says and says I think he's angry <laughs> no, well there is, a, there is an element to that in translation there like, is an um, element, yes, but yeah, it, like, it's not. It, it you the, you also you you're mostly translating the actual words. Like if you go yeah. to Google Translate, it well, doesn't come back the with this guy is angry. It's like uh, if you, you know, uh, it tr literally transmutes the words. If I think about, because I've uh, I know some Japanese, and I can think of uh, like there's certain phrases where it'll mean something different depending on the context. You know, like it could be not Language just in the sentence, in but way. in the yeah. But the point is though is that um, when you said about animals, is that animals do not have a language. They do yeah. not use words, so to speak. Of mm -hmm. their noises, they produce are usually only noises that reflect their feelings. Yeah. So when you translate an actual human language, you are translating words and the tone of meaning yeah. of them when they were said. With animals, however, there isn't meaning in what they're saying because they haven't, they're not using words. Yeah. When, I mean, which is I, why I when just, she says, oh, that's such terrible language. <laughs> yeah, that is that, true. That, that, that particular that line is, a, is pretty... Uh, uh, a really animal, animal word. Animals actually yeah. talking. But, you're, 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 I mean, it could be that now. she's. It, it could be that she's interpreting his feelings as that. But yeah, you have a point that it's. It's yeah, pretty. She, she is said, saying 
a, a naughty word is literally what she said. So, yeah, and you just said that you, she, you know, you thought that yeah. she meant that they just interpreting their because they don't use words. You're yeah. just interpreting their feelings. But on the other hand, she had tea parties with bears before, so yeah, you can still be kind to get along with someone even if you don't actually speak the same language. Mm -hmm. I can still walk up to someone in a different country and shake their hand or smile and point and say, "We want." <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I thought that was a little talking? bit incongruous. What, what were we saying about Fluttershy? Oh right, I was. We were talking through, about um, her, um, her character because she is part of the arc. I mean, the Discord yeah. one. I think we've sort of agreed on it. It it didn't have the pacing. I think is my problem because yeah. Discord doesn't really work for. Uh, and, telling us his emotions or feelings. Yeah. And his tr uh, his uh, turn came far too uh, quick, not only on the problem that there uh, was only 20 minutes of episode and they had to squeeze everything in. The whole... There's not uh, a progressive change. Yeah, it, yeah, and the, the, yeah, the, the whole uh, re reformation, the whole, or in this case, the whole befriending him from uh, uh, Fluttershy did, was taking, what, one day? Because... Yeah. He's moving there, then uh, he's doing the thing with turning the cottage, and the next thing is, oh, come over for dinner. And uh, the beavers, uh, also the, the beavers, I don't know, probably you can see them all the time in the background uh, getting uh, the wood to yeah, the yeah. dam. So, yeah, this all probably takes place... Uh, in takes about an afternoon. <laughs> yes, exactly. And this is like, really... He is the Lord this of is Chaos. kind of a, a common problem yeah. in MLP is that they don't ever use time lapses uh, yeah. when they're telling their stories. It's like uh, in Feeling Pinky Keen, a lot of people have said that when, when she hooks Pinky up to the machine and then mm -hmm. she literally stands there for about 13 seconds and then says, I'm not getting any results. This is useless. You know, and people said, <laughs> really? You're going to give, like, there should have been a three days later just title card. Anything could have made that more believable where we really think yes. that Twilight has exhausted her efforts in understanding the Twitch phenomenon and not just that she gave up like it was nothing, you know? Yeah, it's it, just it, a it, it weird doesn't thing need, in MLP. It doesn't need the card. It should have just been, yeah, fade to black and come back and she's, yeah, and she's tired haggard. looking. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yes. do something. <laughs> why not? Why not? Uh, and yeah, same thing here. Uh, okay, it would have been tricky to uh, um, make it believable that Discord was hanging around for days in Fluttershy's cottage yeah. and not doing some crazy stuff. But it was yeah. it was like well, okay, this especially because at the start of the episode when it shows him like in his. Uh, he's like in the robe and everything at her, at her house when she's leaving yeah. and stuff. And I really got the impression that it was going to be like, okay, like he's going to be my roommate for a little while, you know, and like yeah. it was going to go on that a little more. Again, I think it's just a weird MLP issue because I can think mm. of a lot of instances well, where if you just threw in a couple of little time skips to make it seem like time happened, then uh, what the hell? Yeah, uh, I think uh, one thing I, I didn't, uh, you know, with Discord, he has no rules. He is yeah. pure chaos. Mm. Unless you contain him with the elements of harmony, he can sort of do almost anything he wants. So, I mean, he could have just teleported away. Yeah. He doesn't actually... He's not... You know, the, the main six all need to be together to even fire the elements of harmony at still him. Still, so they can actually... Uh, yeah. yeah, so... I don't know if he can just bound. teleport across the planet or anything, because we kind of wonder why he wouldn't have done that Immediately, yeah. you know, he, well, can, I don't know. he can transform himself into other objects and stuff yeah. like that. You know, um, hide for eternity and just spread chaos without anybody finding him. So, I mean, there is an extent to which we have to give the writers some leeway with this, where we can't demand yeah. that they make this completely believable, because otherwise, you you just have no story. You know, well, that's the thing. if we yeah, say, oh, if he's an agent of chaos, he can do whatever he wants, so he should turn into a vase for three days, and everybody forgets he's there. But it's like then we can't do an episode but like he, this. He literally is the spirit of chaos. Yeah, if anyone who should be able to break rules, it would be him. Yeah, and it's a lot we like are now befriending say, him. It's a lot like when people say that Celestia should be able to handle these problems a lot more easy because she's supposed to be God, you know, so she should be able to just zap all this stuff into not being ridiculous anymore, you know, and she always has to rely on the elements of harmony and stuff like that, you know. Again, it's just stuff that 
to some extent, we have to say, okay, we can have uh, an all-powerful the creature. For the drama, yeah, uh, we rely on the main six. Uh, well, no, I mean, it, it's it's for the purpose of the drama that we often have the main six doing stuff rather yeah. than always going to Celestia for your problems. Mm-hmm. And it's not too much of a contrivance that uh, they do that. That yeah. um, in some way or regard, the elements of harmony have some power beyond Celestia. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, when she's, you know, beaten by uh, Chrysalis, she, you know, just goes, go and get the Elements yeah. of Harmony, because I, I, you know, I've blown it. <laughs> so, yeah. it's obvious that the Elements of Harmony can solve what Celestia can't. Mm. And in that way, I, I don't think it, it, it's not an obvious contrivance. However, I'm going to say NY's phone. Yeah, I'm quite used to hearing that. Um, yeah, so, but or with not. Discord, however, um, he is so written to be free. He is yeah. so written to just be well, chaos, to be himself, and yeah. now we're trying to force him to be something different. Yeah, and 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 the and the reason why is because we can use his magic. We, you yeah. know, I don't know. It's like it, what, what's really, what thinking? She, yeah, what is she gonna do with it? That's the big. That's like the biggest question out of this episode. What's she gonna do with that magic? I'm really curious. I want to know if this is going to come up later, if this is going to be in the finale, like what she's doing with Discord. <laughs> they, well, they obviously, by this change... Blood, God, God damn it, I don't know why. Um, yeah, th- th- through this change, they're obviously wanting to make uh, Discord a more recurring character mm. because the way he is written now, he is he, uh, he's going to drive events whenever he is free. Yeah, but now he is sort of friends with them. So now his actions are going to be more restricted. He can yeah. be a more normal person, kind of like Luna, where she just kind of can show up, and we can say, "Oh, hey, Luna, you know, you're doing things." Except she hasn't done much of them. Well, she was in a dream. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> Which was yeah, just kind of drawn out because we needed to do something cool with Luna. <laughs> but it was a nice idea, after all. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice, I guess. Finally, some of the uh, very powerful characters doing anything. Yeah. Because, yeah, the show's mostly been about the main six. Exactly. And this is fine so far, but uh, you it always have the story. They what, have. what do these Articons do all day long? Yeah. Paperwork or sleep? <laughs> I imagine it's mostly paperwork on Celestia's part. That's why she can't get out at all. Maybe. I, we don't see her doing much other than, you know, in the the dark door, you know, signing something. Um, yeah. But that that's the dark door, and I would say Celestia isn't acting normally in that one. Hmm. So I'm not sure whether I can judge her doing paperwork is normal either. Oh, that is true. Maybe yeah. that's just what Twilight thinks she does all day. <laughs> it turns Maybe. out something completely different. <laughs> this yeah, would be something. really interesting to explore in like a fan fiction or something, just to have like Twilight thinking, like you know, ex- explain to people. Oh, I'm pretty sure she just does paperwork all day, and it's like, do you know that? And then she just has to like stalk Celestia and find out what she really does. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah. make it an actual episode, not a fan fiction. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Pinkie Pie, so. Yeah, it would be interesting to see what lesson they try and do. Don't stalk? No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, actually, that would be Celestia actually lesson. does if do... It's, uh, if it's like, you know, don't... Maybe she has... The episode would be about her having, like, overly high expectations for what Celestia must be like. And the episode would be about, like, not having overly high expectations of adults and stuff. Yeah, but uh, they lesson. are not going for the uh, lesson thing anymore so strongly. So they, it is yeah, more that's true. thing, so... Yeah. If any time to do it, it is now before they are forced to go back to the original <laughs> formula. Yeah. I'm not sure why they would be necessarily forced, but um, the, the the one problem with having Celestia and Luna is that they are so far away. Mm. They are all the way away in Cantalot, and they are always the high and mighty, you know, authority figures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's quite unless you know the, the the way to get Celestia in your story is to have a visit. Yeah. Or have her around in Cantalot when you're visiting. Mm. That you always have to move the characters around to get them to interact. Mm. 
Yeah. And the characters can actually travel pretty fast to uh, Candlelot back and yeah. forth. So. Yeah, it's elite, still, though, know. that they always have to, you know, explain why they're going there and then show a yeah. scene, scene of them going there. <laughs> that if you're trying to pace the story out, it, it always means that you've always got this gap here where you say they travel to Cantalot. Or yeah. you remove the gap and people are just like, what, we're suddenly at Cantalot? <laughs> you know, it, Although if it, they it, actually it, just started an episode off in Cantalot, it wouldn't be that hard to grasp, I think, at this point. I think most people yeah, watching yeah. the show would know, oh, it's Cantalot, that's where they are. It's yeah. always, though, that they need a reason to be at Cantalot. Yeah, they do that need a reason it, to be. It, it's not, uh, you know, it, that um, Twilight isn't always around Celestia, so if she's ever going to yeah. interact with Celestia... Sweden they need a reason to interact. In a lot. What was Sweden that? Sweden Elite starts in Cantalot. Yeah. Uh, does it start on... Yeah, that's right. It starts off in the suite at the top of the... And, it, and it's like, I'm Celestia, I've opened you this room. Yeah. And that's sort of it for her, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, so there's a little bit of setup, but we start right away there. <laughs> Even with Celestia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so... That's always the difficulty with uh, writing for Celestia. Okay, Byter, now you have to be interrupted. Hmm? I, I I got interrupted. I, I, could, I, could, I could interrupt my roommate who's just come back from Vietnam. <laughs> like, 13-hour flight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to catch up on the, the jet lag. They probably wouldn't be happy. So, yeah, um, we actually were trying to go back to uh, Fluttershy's arc in this story. Right. Yeah. And then we got uh, sidetracked. Yeah, <laughs> and somebody in the chat already posted uh, Fluttershy. Yeah, I agree. Fluttershy is my least favorite. <laughs> Wait, who? Where? Uh, yeah, on the YouTube channel. The Rubber Fury. Knight. I don't remember any of us saying, quote, Fluttershy oh, is my least favorite. Really, yeah. Well, that's his own opinion, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but he but said, he I agree with why you don't like it. What is he agreeing it. with? Probably <laughs> you, because you're the one who went most long with Fluttershy. I don't know, I don't did know. me and AY even say anything yet? Not really. About Fluttershy? About Fluttershy? No. Oh, I, I still have a lot more to say if, I, if you want me to keep going about it, because... <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's... Um, at least she's at least interesting. Um, personally, because uh, until now, mm. I would have said that she yeah, was the least interesting... Had... She actually became interesting through the new yeah, episode. Yeah, I had I, I had a lot of thoughts about Fluttershy in this episode about how she's interesting, and most uh, importantly, is because and this is something. Okay, hold on. Before I get ahead of myself, <laughs> have either of you guys seen the movie The Emperor's New Groove? Yes. No? Oh, I love it. I heard one yes and one no. I'm yes. You're saying, okay. Well, in that movie, uh, since Spider, I guess, has not seen it. And to our viewers. About a, it's yep. it's it's pretty much the same plot as this episode actually. Uh, the idea is that there's this emperor named Kuzco, and he's just wants to do whatever he wants and just kind of create chaos in the kingdom because he can, and it's he's the emperor. And then there's this guy named Pacha who is going to be the victim of this because the emperor is going to tear down Pacha's village to build his summer home there. He is so and, uh, shy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So Pacha in in the movie, he believes that there's some good in everyone, and he spends the the whole movie trying to help uh, the emperor because the emperor gets turned into a llama and like banished, and so he spends the whole movie trying to help the emperor, even though he knows that the emperor is still planning to destroy his house, and he's hoping that at some point then the emperor will learn empathy and not do this, but he helps him even regardless of whether or not the emperor is going to to learn empathy because he just that's just his moral code and he believes that there's good and the emperor meanwhile thinks that he's just going to play this guy and he's going to tear his house down once he's done once he's gotten what he wants out of him and all that which is a lot like discord where discord thinks he's just going to pull one over on fluttershy and you know reign yeah, I get chaos the supreme similarity. yeah it's so, used to create the drama isn't it yeah that um, and uh, one is very dogmatically trying to do the friendship work, <laughs> and the other uh, is trying to, you know, just so you know, continue to do whatever they were doing. Yeah. And the question is, will the uh, pursuit of, in this case, friendship work? Yeah. And is that person being blinded or going to suffer as a yes. consequence of said yes. route? And the thing was, is, yeah, I was oh, going to say that that <laughs> wasn't actually a character arc. I mean, yeah, she, no, 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 it's she not sticks a character with that arc. way. She, but, you know, uh, that she stays dogmatically doing that through the, the whole time. I'm, uh, 
the reason I'm bringing. By the way, uh, short question: uh, Did you put the Emperor's new groove in your uh, review? Did you mm -hmm. did you put the Emperor's? Uh, the yes, I talk about it extensively in my. Ah, in my video. because I have a comment in the chat that uh, this is the second video somebody makes this comparison, so maybe. Uh, yeah, it was my video, so that would be why you've already seen this comparison. Oh, <laughs> um, right. Carry on. Funny. So, so anyway, I said, um, yeah, it creates the drama, but I said that it isn't actually much of an arc. Yeah, and uh, but well, the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, what makes Fluttershy interesting in this episode to me is actually what she does differently from Pacha. Because in the movie, then uh, Pacha, he really has faith that the Emperor is going to transform and become good. And he kind of, they become friends. Like that movie, it does this plot line correctly, where both characters have like a whole arc, and they both evolve and change. And in the end, they become real friends. Well, in this episode, what's interesting to me is that Fluttershy, I don't think ever became friends with Discord, like in a in a in a sense where she no. cared about him, because. The conceit Just is supposed to be, yeah, we're supposed to believe that at the end, Discord did care about Fluttershy. Of but course, they, the episode has failed this. Yeah, they they did nothing, nothing to prove it. But no, for this, that's what I said, that neither have an arc. Yeah, yeah huh. but the the idea here would be that, 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 Discord, uh, that Discord did care about Fluttershy, but conversely, Fluttershy never cares about Discord. And so... If I were to well, rewrite this episode, to. yeah, she has no reason to. Mm -hmm. So, if I were to rewrite this episode, the way I would do it is that I would say that um, throughout the episode, Discord would genuinely get to be—he would genuinely want to be friends with Fluttershy because for some reason they would bond. He would see her as like a great person, and he would want to be friends with her. And then in mm. the end, Fluttershy would turn him down because she. Her, she never wanted. She was never trying. To, she never liked him as a person. Is what I'm getting at. She never liked him. She just thought that being mean to people is wrong inherently. She's never. She she wants to give Discord the benefit of a doubt because that's what she does for people, not just because of who he is as a person. And so when Discord would see this, then it would crush him because he would realize that he wasn't as good of a person as Fluttershy was, and then he would have to get on her level in order to be friends with her, you know, and that would be That's the more a affecting yeah. conclusion, mm. would be if he realized, oh, wow, so Fluttershy didn't care about me, she just was good, and so yeah. I should be um, good, you know. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a different uh, idea of how I would do it in retrospective. I mean, first thing first is that uh, the difficulty of making Discord change, or trying to add something to his character, mm. and not uh, and making sure that he can't just run away and there is a proper reason for him to escape yeah. that we need to have a good setup premise so what i my idea was that uh, instead um, if we had like an epic story going on through several episodes or something like the say for example the changelings are again surrounding them yeah you know something like that the, the big bad is surrounding them and they're like Oh crap! You know we need oh. Discord's magic. You're totally making me see this now. Where it'd be like if he just showed up in like each episode throughout the season, like during the climax, and they just like slowly he started to. Yeah, the, the, that was like, one way I said that. You could have him. Lesson. Yeah, you could have him appear bits and pieces and oh, interact with him. I'm trying to think. There's or somebody who could have a villain who did this before. Or it's what? like the um like rival characters in like a. Uh, I'm trying to think like old children's cartoons. I'm gonna say like. Not Power Rangers. What am I trying to think of? Whenever there's like the, oh, like the a outsider, sixth ranger. yeah, like a sixth ranger, basically. Whenever there's like the outsider character who doesn't really Belong agree with the core the five, and then like over the course of the show, he would learn from them. I guess it's like a Shadow the Hedgehog kind of thing. So yeah, the, I, the, yeah, you could pace it out throughout the season if it yeah, was more action. Where basically each time he shows up, then he learns something about the way that the main the main six do things, where he would realize, hey, these guys, the way they do things is actually is actually cool yeah. and interesting, and then he learns from them and eventually uh, joins them. That yeah. would definitely be interesting. The, that would have taken uh, a lot more forethought than I think they, they used in the <laughs> making this. Is, yes. uh, now they can't do this anymore. The, yeah, other, it's sad the, now. Yeah, the it's other way... <laughs> The well, well uh, the point I was actually. How many for, villains are there left who could do this? Can we have? Can well, we bring in Chrysalis and let her have this arc? <laughs> Sombra, Sombra, there um, you go. Yeah. The other way they could do this though is have a, you know, like a finale, a double episode. But in this one, I my my premise would be that they are all stuck together and they need to free Discord so he can use his magic to get them free. Yeah, and. 
Discord and them are both stuck in this bubble. Oh, so it would be a bottle episode then. Yeah, they'd, they'd be bottled up, and Discord just wants to be Discord, and they want him to do stuff, and so there's a lot... You could do, you could do something there with the characters, because quick, they are, are now being forced with, together. Um, are you guys familiar with the term bottle episode as a TV trope? You ever read no. TV tropes? Yeah. Mm. I'm like an obsessive TV tropes reader, but uh, the there's term bottle so episode, many. it uh, refers to the idea of an episode where... Um, Usually because, of, yeah, usually because of yeah, usually because of a low a budget, yeah. they're all in one room through like the whole episode, and like, it's all just dialogue. Dark like elevator or Twelve Angry Men. Yeah, Twelve Angry Men is the classic bottle scenario. Yeah, yeah. So what I was saying, like, um, you don't even have to do the Discord completely changes how he feels arc. Yeah. That, um, you could just do baby steps. And what I was saying was that they're they're stuck in a bottle together. And Discord just sort of, he decides to work along with them. Yeah. And they have a fun adventure working together to defeat the other big bad. Mm -hmm. And in that respect, you know, the two sides could gain a, a, a slight respect for one another, which yeah. then could be used later on in other Discord returning episodes. It definitely feels like this is something that other shows have done much better. Now it's just like flooding into me, having to like face the realization yeah. of how much they could have done with this concept. Yeah, not just finish the whole idea in one afternoon in time, yeah. in serious time. Well, that's sort of season three in a, in a nutshell in a lot of ways. That they always they go in with quite high-minded concepts um, that you know that could be really powerful, but they don't totally deliver on it. Mm. Mm. I could see that for definitely the Crystal Empire could have been expanded on a lot. If there's one episode that actually could have been three parts, it probably would have been the Crystal Empire, just to flesh everything out in that whole... Uh... No, just no. take Barry out of it! <laughs> Cut it down! Make it last longer, please! <laughs> You're insane! <laughs> I'm guessing you guys aren't, aren't big fans of the Crystal Empire episode? <laughs> no. <laughs> We've unfortunately had we've had quite a bit of discussion before on this topic. <laughs> My biggest problems with that episode are mostly just that they didn't uh, expand on the because they they introduced this whole new lore that we really know nothing about and they didn't teach us enough about it. You know. Yeah, that's what I say. Uh, if it's a world building episode, it doesn't yeah. work as a world building episode. What it, it tries doesn't. to do is have some building, you know, grand epic story yeah. unfolding. And, and it doesn't that, happen. <laughs> it doesn't does, come together. Yeah. It, 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 could have, it could have been a movie, like a separate movie no. from the show with a whole... Well, I mean, <laughs> we're assuming that they're going to do it right if they have the time to, to, to do it as a full movie. But this is it's a lot like, um, just the plot in general is a lot like what, you know, spin-off movies usually are of cartoons, where they go to a whole new place and they introduce all this new stuff and you know, and it all gets resolved like that. If you ever, well, I don't know if you guys are anime fans or anything, if you've ever heard of uh, the Pretty Cure series, every mm -hmm. year they reboot the series, and each time it's got a movie at some point, and it's always like, because like, you know, the whole show will take place like just in their hometown, they're fighting monsters. It's basically like a Power Rangers for little girls kind of thing. Uh, and then when they have the movie, it'll be like they go to some forgotten kingdom in some other dimension and they fight this new bad guy or uh, like One Piece movies pretty much do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there could be a potential for the story to be told. Um, but, it, you know, I don't think the story they tried to tell was a fun one. Mm. Yeah. That, uh, it it's didn't, a weird, it, it's a really it doesn't, weird story. It doesn't have... A, I mean, if I'm supposed to empathize with the characters, it doesn't have any interesting character arcs and it, it doesn't yeah. focus on it tries you know it keeps jumping around to different characters and they just have yeah. their bit where they do their thing yeah. and you know stuff like the jousting it's just sort of it's got to do something you know yeah. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't it doesn't you know all the all their actions don't really feed off one another and I think the other problem with the episode is just how impotent Sombra is yeah uh, um, that there's no driving much, action I there's no escalation agrees. That that Sombra is kind of just a he's just kind of there like no uh, I think yeah. it's like a, one unanimous thing that all Bronies can agree on Sombra not the best villain <laughs> yeah it, it's not just that he's not a good villain it's also that the way he is used makes the story not very good in the sense that he doesn't make any escalating tension he doesn't contribute to any tension to speak of really we're just sort of told there's a scary guy outside yeah. he might break in some point. 
Um, but the tension does come through with Cadence, at least in my opinion. I was really, like, when I watched the episode, I was like, I want to see her not look like this anymore. She needs to, you know, because I think they did a great job of making her look really tired and really, like, on the verge of death. Like, she'd been up for, like, weeks or something, and it was... It was always, you know, though, like, you know, it's always just a cutaway to her being, ups- uh, you know, um, really tired. Yeah. And it's never clear when she's going to fail. So we're sort of... Yeah, just, that's you, true. The thing is... She that, does have a lot of moments where it's like, okay, now's the moment, but then she's still fine later because, you know, yeah. She lasts for so long, it's just sort of... Eh, she looks tired, but... They should have given her a real fail moment, like maybe three-fourths of the way through, where she just completely burned out and was done, and it's like, okay, well, now it's, you know, now it's real. Well, technically, she, she through halfway, gives up, but then just yeah. brings it back up anyway. So, yeah. you know, we've we broke... You know, the, the bad guy's almost got in. Oh, wait, no, he hasn't. Yeah. So, it actually, it makes it feel less scary. And also, I don't know, when I was watching it, I was I was asking questions at that point. I see. So, like, I mean, um, but I, mind you, when I watched the episode, what, it was like I was so excited about this being new MLP that I was probably didn't not, have your nitpicking glasses on. Uh, I mean, obviously, I've watched it like four times now, so I've had yeah. time to you know look at it. I've done a video on it and everything, and in general, it's just that like it's kind of like uh, when A and Y said that. If he liked the episode, then it's, it's going to come out positive. If he didn't like it, it's going to come out negative. Where I could have nitpicked the episode a lot more than I did because yeah. it does have all those problems. But in the end, I wanted to be sort of positive towards it because I did enjoy it. And it had uh, it happened to be somewhat important to me because it came to me at a time where I was like having a really shitty week. And then this episode came out and I was like, yes! And then it... It inspired me to start writing about ponies again, which, of course, launched this series, which is now all I'm fucking doing with my life. So. <laughs> my problem is, is like um, that I started reviewing for season three, and yeah. I wanted to say, start explaining how I thought that the show was more than just a girl's TV program, yeah. and why and I was the involved. Did, uh, didn't didn't make you feel that way anymore. Indeed. Instead, what I'm, I, I, I wanted to look at it, you know, I wanted to say about, you know, how it works with characters, story, and a little bit of humor. And this one, though, I said that the cause, you know, the story of it didn't work. It wasn't cohesive. So in the end, even if I'm involved in the show, I mm-hmm. didn't find it a good episode, or it wasn't a good episode. Yeah. And that's sort of the reality of it. What I was going to say, though, earlier about uh, just uh, plot holes was... Um, okay, we know Shining Armor can do um, bubble spells, right? Same as mm. Cadence. And we have seen earlier uh, when Celestia showed dark magic and light magic. So why can't Twilight learn the bubble spells, is what you're saying? No, no, no well, that also. But why didn't <laughs> she, she learn the dark magic? Why didn't yeah. she learn the light magic and use it against the crystals in, uh, well, all over the place, or, and particularly in Shining Armor's horn? Yeah. That is a good point. I never thought about that at all. <laughs> like, you know, if you because it, you know, it, it, it's Chekhov's gun in that situation that they, they set yeah. it up, and they set up two things. So we're yeah. going to use both of them, right? Well, they only used one. They, I was like, okay, use the light magic on shining armor. Oh, yes. you're you're not that well. Oh well, I've got to do stuff. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? What? No one even tried to fix him. Yeah, was, that is true. It was true. a bit odd. It was like. It was weird altogether that he got that, that. That it really felt like, oh, like the writers were writing the episode, and then they went, oh shit, we have to make sure that Shining Armor can't. Like, why can't he help them? And they're like, oh, put the black <laughs> on his horn. That'll do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would have been actually. It might have been better if you had like either a Shadow Shining Armor come back l- much later, or that not come be, back at all. That would be crazy. Yeah. That would actually make a sense. You know, that would contribute to a sense of tension rather than if he gets you. He puts uh, rocks in your horn, and as <laughs> long as Twilight it, is an idiot, she yeah. won't solve it. It would have been also a great way to have, because Sombra is so non-present that he could have been more present if there had been that, uh, like the the dark. Um, yeah, exactly. If he actually had done over. something. I think that we're yeah. going with uh, Sombra Four. So, but anyways, we are uh, getting close to the uh, yeah end point, <laughs> and uh, for the last he five minutes, for some reason. Yeah. yeah, for the 
for the last uh, ten to five minutes, we kind of talked about more Crystal Empire than Flutter on. Yeah. A few things it's... from the chat I wanted to mention. <laughs> First, uh, Digi, you have to talk. Uh, have to have a talk with Bled, uh, Bradley Thompson because he just uh, pro uh, proclaimed Fluttershy as best pony. So I see. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't dislike Fluttershy. I don't know why that other guy was agreeing with me. Um, one of the the thing I uh, I say in my you video, find her difficult to understand. Yeah, in my in my video, I make an offhand comment where I say, um, you know, I don't because I, I was saying that this episode is the most interesting Fluttershy to me, but I'm not trying to insult the other Fluttershy episodes because I think that most of them are pretty good. I don't I don't care about a bird in the hoof, but the other ones are uh, they're all solid episodes. You know, it's just that they just keep reestablishing Fluttershy, um, and that's well, just you, you've you seen know. it before. But yeah. I quite I quite liked, for example, Hurricane Fluttershy. It, yeah, it I mean, it's do, a great it, episode. It did a, it did a, yeah, it did a great character arc for that. I don't. I don't um, think that uh, that the episodes providing us new, like I don't think expanding on Fluttershy and uh, and being a good episode have to mean the same thing. It can be a great episode without expanding on anything. There's plenty of those in this show. You know. Funny thing is, I didn't necessarily want to just oh, oh, uh, restart the whole Fluttershy discussion. <laughs> I just wanted. Well, to... we come back to the ep the actual yeah episode, yeah yeah. yeah. The episode. About uh, Fluttershy and Discord, you know, and there's not much to say about Discord as we've established. He's, and he's pretty much doesn't have a real arc. He's just kind of there to be funny and. And, you, and that was and that was sort of the thought I thought you were going with your comparison is that what I said was with Fluttershy she doesn't go through an arc much either. Yeah. She tries to stare at the beginning, which is, is again is sort of. Uh, you know, it's like they look uh, that they, they got the notes, and it says Fluttershy can talk to animals, and Fluttershy <laughs> has to stare. Yeah. Oh, don't swear! I'm going to use the stare on you. <laughs> um, <laughs> she, it, it, it's sort of drawing attention to her abilities, as if you know they're like you know lightning bolts yeah. or something, which is it felt a little bit off to me. But yeah, uh, she doesn't actually go through an arc. It's only whether Discord will succeed in escaping. And duping Fluttershy is the drama of the episode. Um, well, I don't think, I, like you said, I don't think Fluttershy has an arc, but it's also just a new take on her character, or not a new take, but it introduces new concepts of her character that she would be. Because um, like her her big victory in this episode is pretty much that she's this really moral uh, person, whereas the other uh, ponies kind of aren't. Yeah. Um, the way I, because all the other ponies completely doubt that she's gonna do this. You know that they all think, they're all like, "What are you doing? You're just letting Flutter, uh, you're letting Discord walk all over you." There, and there's even this great moment when she asks them, uh, "Yeah, do you, do you think, do you think I'm stupid?" And everybody's like, "Oh, I, I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that's that is her. That is to me the big moment in the episode. Are the, the two. Big so basically, be, she's uh, kind. Actually, yes, this yeah, has never been exactly. shown before. Exactly, she's <laughs> kind, but it's it's showing that kindness is a power, and not just it's not something that makes her weak, which I think is what the other ponies think, because they all see themselves as strong and her as weak, and they, you know, kind. The, the episode was meant to prove that kindness is a strong, powerful element that can itself take down even the the biggest foe in the series. Whether or not it they deliver, it, well, it, yes. <laughs> Is a, is another story, but the the actual conceit behind the episode, the concept that drove them to write it, I think is interesting. And if they had done it right, this would have been a phenomenal episode. If it, it would have been put together yeah. well, it would have made Fluttershy really feel like the most like she would have felt really badass because she would have been the one who came out on top. None of the other ponies thought of her idea. She did. You know, she's the one who beat Discord. So that would have been so satisfying. But it just isn't. It. It's not as satisfying as it should be, you know. I yeah. want to feel the satisfaction, so I'm trying to feel the but satisfaction. But it's not earned. But it's not earned by the writers. It's earned. I think it's earned by Fluttershy as a character, but it's not earned by the writers in how they portrayed the episode, you know. So yeah, it, it's the way they wrote the episode and yeah. how the events played out. And there I wasn't think any, a, you know, yeah, there wasn't like, pacing. Like I said earlier, how people tend to want, uh, they want to rationalize everything that happens in the show. Uh, I guess I'm somewhat feeling that, because uh, like I said, I want to think of this as Fluttershy, because I want to believe that she can be this badass, because that makes her so much more interesting to me. So when I think of Fluttershy from now on, I'm going to think of her as, yeah, she's the one who proved that kindness can, can kick evil's ass. You know, even though the writers didn't 
didn't. It's not like technically, though, she has always been the kind. Way, you know, she's um, always been the kind character. It's always yeah. been the difficulty, though, of you know um, her confidence in uh, yeah. applying said kindness, and they keep doing that in different situations. Yeah. And in this case, it was with the big bad. Mm -hmm. Interesting, different point of view, uh, also from the chat. Uh, James uh, Essex goes there and says Fluttershy is actually filthy liar and deserves to be eaten alive. Okay, that's a point. <laughs> 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 it's I'm liar. Of, but I'm kind of getting the, uh, what he's talking about because. Well, you can't tell I, if she's sincere. Mm. Yeah, th that that's the thing. That's again the thing they let take a place only during this short period of time. So that the whole friendship thing feels a little bit like an act because yes, she yeah, I think it is really an gives act. the benefit of a doubt. But in like the moment I... she sh in this badass moment where she goes there and says, "Of course I know it. I'm just it yeah. feels a little bit like she is actually playing him, and this is not so nice." Yeah, if we think about it, yeah. The what would you, I would say the big badass moment is that final scene with the shoe yeah, throwing and everything else. That was the else. other one I, I, I was going to say was when she, like I said, um, she, in the end of the episode, she doesn't hold to friendship with, with uh, Discord. She holds to morals. She says, uh, you know, I'm going, like, I, I said I wasn't going to do this and I'm not going to because my whole point was that I don't, I don't I'm not going to be this... I'm not going to be a dick to you. I'm just going to. She stay to her word. To be... <laughs> I'd love if she said those. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she she's like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be mean to you. I'm going to. Uh, mm. But I'm going to stand by my my myself. You know. And, and yeah, she... and th that's the interesting thing that in that sense, Discord has actually won at this point. But for some reason, yes, yeah. his twist. Exactly. And that's sort of the thing that that final scene, the epic badass moment. Um, the way it was built up to, and the presentation of it itself, it, it kind of, it wasn't that, it wasn't awesome. It was, it was really confusing, I think, watching it. That we, it wasn't like, it yeah, I know Discord's going to change. It was like, yeah. well, actually, yeah, I know Discord's going to escape, and they're just going to use the elements of harming on him, or, you know, it, it, it's just that, I, you know, both sides could be acting. Yeah. And, I mean, and none it, have gone through an arc, so. If it had gone through, like, if Fluttershy... It's really just the problem with Discord again, where if Fluttershy had done this, if she had tossed the element on the ground, and then uh, Discord had just not become friends with her, and the whole thing happened like that, then it would have st you would have understood, okay, Fluttershy standing by her morals. And if it had gone the other way, where Discord had gone through an arc, then we would believe, okay, Discord... Uh, is, is actually changed, but since he's not actually changed, then it loses power because he just does some random thing and decides to be friends with Fluttershy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I'm not sure it, it, it's only Discord. It both... I think if both, you know, if Discord was, uh, if they made the premise a lot better and they both played off each other and had, both had arcs, yeah. it could work. It's if just that, both didn't. That have way, arcs. it would be it would be the Emperor's new groove if they if they took that route where both of them have that kind of arc and they really became friends with each other. That would yeah, be... and for that you need a good premise and you need a good amount of time to do it. Yeah, and the, the time is definitely a big factor. And the difficult part also is trying to change Discord to be able to even have this arc in the first place. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot Fluttershy. You can do this arc. It's fairly easy, but with Discord. It's a lot harder because he's just the element of chaos, and he, he yeah. will do and do uh, and ca does do quite a lot of what whatever he likes, yeah. and it's hard to read him as a character. So it's hard to tell tell any arc between him or the other characters mm -hmm. because he is so fundamentally distrustful. Yeah. Well, endpoint. Yes, I guess so. There was this <laughs> quiet moment, and I'm thinking that was very about, conclusive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So just. Grabbing this point as it comes. Uh, what, it was nice talk uh, with you. What's an interesting experience having somebody, uh, a third person on the podcast? Maybe uh, I guess it's something I, yeah, considering doing more often because it's a lot more dynamic the conversation. So, yeah, mm. people expect more guests in the future. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I'll come back if you want to have me uh, again. Any other? Oh time. yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, this. Uh, yeah, you can find Digibrony stuff here on YouTube. Uh, I guess I'll put him under my recommended channels on my main channel page, so you can find him easily. He's this inverted uh, uh, Sweetie Bell uh, icon, at least for the moment. <laughs> 
maybe changing in the near future, I heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know how long it'll take, but sometime. Yeah. And I guess I also put the uh, description for uh, the link to his uh, video into the uh, to his channel in the description of the final uploaded version of this podcast, as well as Biter's uh, Divin Art channel, where you can check out his written reviews. And well, my stuff, you're already at the right place. So this Take is it. Thank you. See you soon. Mm -hmm. Ta -da.